Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Midnight Musings. My name is Ron Guth and tonight I want to talk to you about inflation, the declining purchasing power of the dollar, and the rise in the price of gold. These are all interrelated and I want to discuss why it's happening and what you can do to protect yourself against uh, inflation. Right now inflation seems very low. I mean the CPI index, the consumer price index, uh, is very very low and um, so it, inflation does not appear on the surface to be much of a problem. But let's look at what inflation actually is. Inflation is the increase in price of a basket of good goods over time. And you can see that in like your rent, you can see that in the increase in the price of a cup of coffee, the gallon of gasoline, uh, pretty much everything around you uh, seems to be going up in price. Now, why is that not reflected in the consumer price index? Part of it is because um, uh, the the basket of goods that are in the consumer price index has changed over time. Some of some of it was deliberate to keep the CPI down because a lot of the government programs, you know, like say for instance uh, Social Security, uh, that increases each year. Uh, the payments to the Social Security recipients increases every year based on the CPI. So if you keep the CPI low, it decreases the amount of money that you have to pay out. Inflation is caused by uh, an, an expansion of the money supply, and this is done literally by running the printing presses and creating more money, more dollars, and diluting those that are already in circulation. The way that we see the effects of that is by looking at the purchasing power of the dollar over time. If we look at December 1999 and use that as a starting point where a dollar is worth a dollar, and we look at the purchasing price of the dollar today, it's 15 cents. So between 1999 and 2020, the dollar lost about 85% of its value. And what that means is that everything that you need to purchase today takes more dollars, takes more money. When we look at the price of gold, gold has gone from $288 in December 1999 to $1,900 today, which is a pretty significant increase. And it doesn't mean that the gold has changed. An ounce of gold is an ounce of gold. But what it means is that it takes more dollars to buy it. In other words, the purchasing power of the dollar has become so diminished and so weak that it takes 1,900 of those dollars to buy an ounce of gold today, whereas it took 288 in 1999. So that's a that's a very good in, in, um, illustration of what has happened to the purchasing power of the dollar. And you can also see it, I think there's a chart I saw where the uh, price of a cup of coffee was 25 cents in 1970 and today it's a dollar 95. Uh, although if you go to Starbucks it's four dollars. What can you do about it as an individual to protect yourself against um, inflation? And really we're not too concerned about inflation per se. We're, we're worried about hyperinflation. Hyperinflation occurs when when the uh, price increase in that basket of goods is so rapid that it outstrips your in your personal income. In other words, let's say if gas went today from $2 a gallon to $4 a gallon, a week from now to $5 a gallon, a month from now $10 a gallon, um, two months from now, and just went just kept going up and up and up, and yet your pay, your income from your job did not increase enough to keep up with that. At some point, everything would be going up so quickly that you would quickly run out of money and you would you would go broke, you'd go bankrupt. And that's the big fear about hyperinflation. Because unless you have assets that you can sell for dollars, uh, you're not going to be able to keep up with hyperinflation. So you want to put yourself in a position where you do have assets that keep pace with it. 
and gold, of course, is that ultimate hedge against inflation. And we've already seen it as the price has gone to 1900. Your purchasing power of your dollars has gone down, but the value of the gold has gone up. In other words, people uh, still view gold as a desirable asset, a desirable commodity, and a way to, to uh, it's like a time machine that allows you to go from one period to another and keep yourself safe and your assets safe from um, having to sell them to you know, come up with a ton of money to keep up with the hyperinflation. If we look at what's happened in America, the quantitative easing that has taken place over the last two decades where they're just printing money, printing money, and you look at our debt, it's now well over, well into the 20s of trillions of dollars I mean, this is just an outrageous amount of money that at some point we're going to have to pay back. You either pay it back or you go bankrupt. That's the same thing that happens in our regular lives. If we get so far into debt, we either have to pay it back or we go bankrupt. Well, if you go bankrupt, that means the value of the dollar just goes to nothing. And that's when, that's when hyperinflation can be a really bad thing. So if you believe that deficit spending is good, and that uh, we can keep uh, spending our way out of uh, our problems, and that you think that maybe someday we'll have the will or the ability to pay down that debt, then by all means, uh, just keep plugging along the way you are and don't do anything about it. But if you think that the debt is a big problem, that you don't think we'll be able to pay it off, or you don't think the politicians have the uh, ability to cut spending or the will to cut spending so that we can start paying off the debt, then you better start looking at assets like gold and silver to um, protect your assets, so to speak. Now, how do you buy gold and silver? That's a big issue nowadays because physical gold and silver are, are difficult to find, and when you do find them, you have to pay a big premium to purchase them. There are ways to buy um, non-physical gold, and that would be like an ETF, an electronic traded fund, where you can buy uh, fractions of fractional shares of gold. You don't have to buy one ounce of gold. You can buy a smaller amount. Or you can buy um, other things like uh, there's um, on the uh, stock exchange, there's things like P PHYS, FIS, PHYS, which is used to purchase gold. Or you can do SLV, which is another way to do the same thing, but with silver. So this is a, a good way to buy it. And when you do it those ways, you're not paying a big premium for the gold and silver like you do, do if you buy physical. The downfall to those sort of paper assets is that they are literally paper. If anything happened to those uh, investments, uh, and you, you would have no recourse. You would not have the comfort of an, an ounce of gold in your hand, or you would not, uh, you, you would just lose everything. So that's the concern. Should you pay the premium to buy the physical, or should you uh, save money on the premium and buy the paper versions of gold and silver? That's up to you. It's um, six of one, half dozen of the other. Personally, I prefer physical. I've always liked physical better, but um, uh, that's, a, again, a decision that's up to you. So the purpose of this video is just really to not to scare you into some doomsday scenario, but to just let you know that there is a consequence of this quantitative easing and this incredible debt that we have that someday we're going to have to pay the piper, and you just have to be in a position to protect yourself. It's just like if you... Um, are, uh, you know, you're putting aside a certain quantity of water for an emergency or a certain amount of food for an emergency. This is just preparing yourself in case of an emergency that you can have that time machine that will keep you safely moving from one period to another. So it's just to, just to give you a heads up, you know, just take a look at it for yourself, look at the purchasing power of the dollar and how it's declined over years, and see what you think the prospects are for inflation in the future, and then you know decide what to do accordingly. So anyway, thank you very much for reviewing. 
If you like this uh, type of video, please subscribe below. That really helps me with YouTube's algorithm. I'd like to move up in the ranks a little bit if I can. Uh, hit the like button. And if you want to get notifications anytime I put up a new video, hit the bell icon below. And of course, leave a comment if you have a subject that you'd like to see discussed. You know, these musings are pretty easy for me to do. And um, I, I can try to talk on just about every subject imaginable. If I don't know about it, I'll certainly research it and then come back to you with what information I find. So thanks again for viewing. Uh, I'm going to go to bed, so I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.